Hey guys, I'm going to do something different for you this month. This is my Fire Queen. It took about 7,000 hours to build. I designed everything myself. It is very, very, very close to the full scale prototype. It is an insane loco to build. Now I did all of my own castings. I did obviously all of my own fittings. Even the name plates I etched using a cell phone charger and stuff that you find in your kitchen. Now, by far the most difficult casting on this loco is actually that. That little copper chimney cap is a bugger to cast. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to mold that chimney cap. And the reason why I do the molding the specific way that I did was to get rid of all the casting inclusions and sort of issues that you have with casting that you typically find when casting something like that. I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so each mold's got top and bottom, obviously. Mm -hmm. and I'm doing two of the same thing at the fronts. The failure rate of these is actually quite bad. So this is a quite a fine sand. I don't have a lot of this left unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But basically it's a chromite sand. So it's a lot finer than the river sand. Mm -hmm. So what I used to do in the past is I actually used to just sift the river sand. But you can't really beat this stuff. It's heavy. It's incredibly heavy sand. And also if you cast a little bit too hot, please, I'm going to be casting brass. So brass is a bit of a bugger. If you cast too hot, you can actually feel it's a lot heavier than normal sand. Jeez. Oh, Weird, eh? But it's expensive. It's like five rand a kilogram. And also the guys don't, they don't want to help you with it. Why? Well, they want to sell tons. They don't want to sell like 500 kilograms. So a ton is about 5,000 bucks. Yeah. Where are you going to put a ton? No, no, a ton is like a wheelbarrow. Or two wheelbarrows, maybe. Like the stuff is, oh, that is, heavy. is about three times heavier than a normal sand. Yeah, but that one's still sticking out. Yeah, that doesn't it's the You ram a lot of sand over it. So this is a, yeah, this is actually a bit of an annoyance class because um, these things actually didn't work the first time. So they've got uh, inclusions. So I was melting like stuff that was really had a lot of um, impurities in. Mm -hmm. And then copper is an interesting one, eh? yes. Yeah, I know what I do there. So, copper, the, the melting point of the oxide is very, very close to the melting point of the, the metal. Mm. And the problem with that is you end up with um, oxides and metal in the melt. So then when you pour it and it starts cooling down, all that oxide gas makes gas. Okay. So I made a. I come up with a. It's like a reductant to stop that from happening, my own little mixture. Mm -hmm. And I know it works, I used it before, but I just. I was lazy this last time, and now I have to freaking redo it, which is popular now. It's got the bentonite in it. But other than that, oh, and it's got carbon in it, but uh, it's, uh, 
it's got um, coal dust. So what the coal dust does, it's actually fascinating, the coal dust gases on the surface, and then that gas pushes back the, the metal, and then you don't get the metal penetrating into the sand. Assuming that little wood thingy there that you're putting in now. That's is, where the metal's gonna fly. Yes, yeah, that's your chimney or your, your inlet. No? Inlet. inlet or in This side get powder and not the other side. The powder is potting. Hey? The powder is for potting. Oh, of course, because you're gonna. Oh, so you're pulling this apart now again yeah. after you've done this. Yeah. So make sure that it. So the powder stops sand because otherwise the sand sand is just gonna stick to the bottom side. Hmm. Casting like this is the way that I put the patterns in the mold. All the faces that are good, that I want a good surface, mm -hmm. they're all at the bottom. So any gas that I might have should go to either to the center of the mold okay. or to the top. Where if you do it conventionally, and you pour it from this side and they're laying like this, then the gas goes to the top of the pattern. So half of your pattern will look great and the other half will look shit. Mm -hmm. I think I can get the freaking guys in the phone to understand that principle. They keep on telling me that I don't know why there's so much gas in the walls. And I keep on telling them it's because you're melting farms. There's too much oxides. No, no, we've always done it like that. You would think you... Something's changed. Well, my, my go-to when people say... Like when, okay, I don't deal with gases and stuff, but I deal a lot with finance people. And I go, no, but it's always worked like that. I'm like, but you've, then you've always been doing it wrong. Yeah. Yes, and then they get, they get a propolis, eh? How can you tell me I'm doing it wrong? Easy. Yeah. I know, because I know how the process should work. It doesn't matter what, what type of finance department it is. That is how it should work. End of story. If you're doing a VAT check, you need these informations. This is not my rules. This is what SARS says. Where do you get these 3D printed? What do you print? I print them. 
Yeah, you got a three, don't you? Yeah. Well, they've got some measure of technology, so. No, no, I just, it's inexpensive. No, mine was like 2,000 bucks. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, look, I mean, I had to build it and <coughs> modify it. Like, you cannot believe. No, 2,000 bucks. Making it traffic. Yeah, otherwise you mess. Yeah. Not that easy to pull liquid metal out when everything's hot. And <laughs> Thank Sometimes if you had to redo this. What this mold? No 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 I'm saying when when it goes wrong. No. You, you actually get better at it. I'm sure. Uh, wait before I just need to sort out the gas. this, I actually want a hole in the middle. So that's what that's for. Let's put the hole in the middle. Otherwise there's not going to be a hole in the middle. One side down. So when do you, when do you actually cost? No, I'll cost tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, that's a whole day. Thing. Okay, so this this now needs to 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 sit overnight and you just. No, nothing happens. So it just stays. Oh, I thought it needs to you know yeah. make nice and. Yeah, yeah. 
Nothing needs to happen. And this then goes into that little spot over there. Yeah. So that it's hollow. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and the problem is that that's where you end up with an explosion. Really? Yeah. Because even this sand is wet, right? Mm. Water on the outside, no problem. Water on the inside, big problem. <laughs> That's why people don't want to do this. It's like... Let's just check if there's like one grain of sand. There's actually a big hole in these small bag costumes. And the fact that that line's not going all the way through is okay? No, it's fine. That's a gas line. But how would the metal go around that thing? It floats. No. I don't know. Porous? That's where the metal is. Oh, so you don't want... Ah, so that was... Okay, now I get it. So you only, only casting that little... I'm casting this. Yes. Okay, now I understand. There you go. Really shit. Now, remember I need to do this for pretty much every part on a loco that needs to be cast. So it puts into perspective how much work these things are. And that's what the youngsters don't appreciate. 